It takes a very specific profile of footballer to win a ridiculous number of youth caps. Typically, you have to have had a big reputation and have shown lots of promise at a very young age in order to get into your country's under 16 or 17 team, and then you have to have continued to be good enough to represent the under 18s, 19s, 20s, and 21s, typically into your early 20s, but without becoming so good that you go straight into the senior team. Someone like Michael Owen, for example, whilst he won plenty of under 15, 16, and 18 caps, by the time that he was 18, he was already starring for England at a World Cup, so he only ever made one appearance for the under 21s. The same is true of someone like Ronaldo, who broke into Brazil's senior team at 17, so he only had time to win 15 caps at all youth levels combined. In today's video though, I am going to be taking a look at the most extreme examples of players who did fit that very specific profile, and who won the most youth caps of all, followed by a look at what they went on to achieve in the senior game, how many senior caps they won, if any, and where they are now. I am going to focus on the seven players with the most youth appearances that are still active because I think you'll all find them more interesting. But I will quickly run through the seven players with the most youth caps who are no longer active as well at the end. It should be said, not all youth team data is readily available, especially the further back you go, and some countries keep much better records than others. So it's possible that some players will be missed or some numbers will be a little bit higher or lower than they should, but I have done my very best for you all. Here are the seven most capped youth internationals who are still playing. What happened next? Seventh, James Milner. It's often the case that players who break through young and play a lot of football in their early years tend to experience burnout later on in their careers, whether that be physical, mental, or both. Meanwhile, those whose rises a little bit more gradual and maybe who don't start playing regularly at the very highest level until they're in their early 20s, are able to go on a little bit longer and maintain their level into their mid to late 30s. Wayne Rooney is a great example of the first type of player. Meanwhile, someone like Jamie Vardy or Aritz Adouris spring to mind in terms of the second. James Milner is one of very few players to have done both, having become the second youngest player of the Premier League era when he made his Leeds United debut at 16, and still playing now, a pretty major role for one of the best teams on the planet at the age of 36. And if you're thinking, what Alfie? Milner barely plays these days. It's worth pointing out that he actually played 39 games this season, which is his highest tally of the last three seasons. To have spent 20 years at the highest level, despite spending most of your career as a very energetic winger or central midfielder, is absolutely remarkable. And that is why he has made over 800 appearances at club level alone and still counting. Milner made a grand total of 70 appearances for England between under 16 and under 21 level, with 46 of them coming for the under 21s. That makes him England under 21's record appearance holder, and it also means that Milner won slightly more youth than senior caps for England, as he went on to win 61 caps in the three lines senior team between 2009 and 2016. As far as this seven goes, it would be fair to say that Milner has had one of the most consistent, accomplished, and impressive senior careers. Sixth, Leroy Fair. A name that will most likely be familiar to those of you who follow the Premier League, Leroy Fair spent six seasons in English football, during which time he was relegated from the Premier League on three occasions with three different clubs. An unlucky omen then perhaps, but good enough to thrice get picked back up by Premier League teams. Fair is tied with James Milner in this seven on 70 international caps at youth team level. As with Milner, most of Fair's youth exploits came at under 21 level, but he was part of the Netherlands setup from the age of 15 onwards. Fair capped in the Netherlands at the 2007 under 17 Euros before stepping up to the under 19s, but despite his starring role for the Netherlands at those two youth levels, he very nearly switched his international allegiance to Curaçao in 2008, outlining his ambition to take the island nation to their very first World Cup. 
but the following year, he announced that he would be sticking with the Netherlands. He went on to become the Dutch under-21 all-time record appearance holder, but his senior international career would be a little bit less illustrious. Fair won 11 caps in four years in the Netherlands senior team, with three of those years overlapping with his time with the under-21 squad. He was part of the Dutch team that won a bronze medal at the 2014 World Cup in Brazil, scoring in his only appearance at that tournament, but he hasn't won a cap since 2014. Now aged 32, Fair famously once bought a horse at an auction for his girlfriend by accident, despite living in an apartment building and therefore having nowhere to keep it. And he now plays for Alanya Spor in the Turkish Super League. Fifth, Nathan Redmond. The ultimate example of the profile of player that I spoke about in the introduction, Nathan Redmond was tipped as Birmingham's biggest prospect from a very young age, which saw him brought into the England setup at the age of 15, and he progressed well in the Birmingham City first team without really being so brilliant that he was immediately snapped up by a Champions League team or fast-tracked straight into the senior squad. The end result was a whopping 77 appearances for England at youth team level, including 38 over the course of four whole years for the under-21s. Quick and unpredictable, Redmond has spent the last seven years playing in the Premier League, which means that he must be doing something right. But there was a long period of time where a lot of people were hoping that he might really explode and turn into something special. Even Pep Guardiola seemed to be quite irate that Southampton weren't getting the best out of him against his own team. Redmond won trophies with England at under 16, 17 and 21 level, he made the 2015 Under-21 Euros team of the tournament, and he won the England Under-21 Player of the Year award in 2016. In spite of all of that, Redmond has only ever won one senior cap for England as a substitute against Germany more than five years ago. Now aged 28, Redmond has since made England squads, but has never won another cap. And the fact that his solitary England appearance came in a friendly game means that both the Republic of Ireland and Jamaica, who Redmond is reportedly eligible to represent, have tried to convince him to switch his international allegiance over to them instead. Thus far, clearly, neither of their attempts have been successful. It should be said that whilst Redmond has not become a bona fide superstar, it is possible that in a different generation, when England didn't have quite as much depth on the flanks, he probably would have won more than one cap. Aaron Lennon, for example, won 21 caps for England, but Redmond has had to contend with competition on the flanks from the likes of Marcus Rashford, Raheem Sterling, Phil Foden, Bakayo Saka, Jadon Sancho, and the like. Fourth, Gerard Delafeu. Not too dissimilar to Nathan Redmond in some respects, Gerard Delafeu is also a 28-year-old wide man who won a ridiculous number of youth caps, was long expected to become a star at some stage, but has only actually won a very modest number of senior caps. It must be said once again, in the case of Delafeu, that he was part of a Spain squad that wasn't exactly lacking in depth in his position. Born in Catalonia, Delafeu was a graduate of La Masia, and he scored a very impressive 18 goals in 33 games for Barca B in the 2012-13 Segunda Division as just an 18-year-old. Tremendously successful for both club and country at youth team level, Delafeu was part of the Spanish squads that won the under-17 Euros, the under-19 Euros twice in 2011 and 2012, and he capped in Spain as they reached the final of the under-21 Euros in 2017, but lost 1-0 to Germany. Oddly enough, Delafeu's senior debut came three years before that tournament, yet he hasn't won a senior cap for Spain since 2017, five years ago. Given his speed and skill on the ball, Delafeu has always had immense promise, but he was unfortunate to break through at Barcelona at a time when Alexis Sanchez, David Villa, Pedro and Lionel Messi were the club's other options for their front three. Delafeu went on to enjoy stints with Everton, Sevilla, AC Milan, and Watford, and he was actually Watford's top scorer with 12 goals in the 2018-19 season. He joined Watford's sister club, Udinese, in 2020, where 
He just enjoyed his best goal-scoring season with 13 goals. But that doesn't seem to have been enough to earn him a recall to the Spain squad just yet. Third, Juan Manuel Sanabria. The youngest player in this seven, Juan Manuel Sanabria, only turned 22 years old in March, and he hasn't played international football of any description for more than two years. Yet, he has won a truly staggering 88 caps for Uruguay youth team level. I should have said, by the way, Dale Lafayu won 87 in total, 36 for Spain's under-21s, and he has been capped four times by Spain at senior level. I know, I'm, I'm quite good at this job. However, whilst the last of Dale Lafayu's 87 youth team appearances for Spain came when he was 23 years old, the last of Juan Manuel Sanabria's 88 youth team appearances for Uruguay came when he was still only 19. I know, pretty remarkable. That tally was made possible, despite Sanabria's young age, because he made an incredible 24 appearances for Uruguay at under-15 level, having been brought into the national team setup at the age of 14, and he made another 24 appearances for Uruguay's under-17s. Having been nurtured in Uruguay by Nacional, Sanabria was snapped up by Atletico Madrid in 2018, heading to the Spanish capital for a little over £1 million on the same day that he turned 18. An industrious central midfielder who has displayed his proficiency from set pieces for Atletico's B team, Sanabria has made just one appearance in the Atletico first team to date, having come on as a substitute in the Copa del Rey and he also made just one appearance on loan at Real Zaragoza in the 2020-21 season. Currently on loan with Atletico San Luis in Mexico's Liga MX, Sanabria is now playing regular first-team football for the first time, but he still seems no closer to his first senior cap for La Celeste. Second, Lasse Vegan Christensen. A man who was briefly brilliant at Fulham following the club's relegation to the championship, Lasse Vegan Christensen began representing Denmark at the age of only 15. Christensen joined Fulham from FC Midland as a 17-year-old, quickly becoming captain of the Cottagers' under-18 team. After Felix Magat was sacked, whilst Fulham were bottom of the championship table, with just one point from their opening seven games, following relegation for the first time in 14 years from the Premier League, and Kit Simmons was appointed as his replacement, Christensen, who had just turned 20 at the time, would become arguably the club's most important player as they finally put together a string of performances and results. His fine form for Fulham at that young age, having long been touted as a future star back home in Denmark, quickly saw Christensen link with a whole raft of Premier League teams. But in March 2015, he suffered a hamstring injury. From that point on, Christensen started to pick up a series of niggling injuries, and the engine and acceleration that had marked him out as a real top talent up to that point seemed to have deserted him. In 2017, he went on loan to Burton Albion before leaving Fulham permanently in a move to Bromby, where he won the Danish Super League title in 2021. Christensen was capped an incredible 90 times by Denmark at youth level, which included 38 appearances for his country's under-21s. In 2016, Christensen was called up to Denmark's squad for the Olympics in Brazil, but his Fulham boss, Slavisa Jakanovic, refused to release him for the tournament. Now aged 27, Christensen is still yet to win a senior cap for Denmark. Following four years at Bromby, Christensen joined Zulta Varagam in Belgium last summer, where he played 22 times this season. First, Nathaniel Chalabar. The three players with the most caps for England's under-21s, namely James Milner, Nathan Redmond, and Nathaniel Chalabar, all feature in this seven. And, as far as I can tell, Nathaniel Chalabar has won more international youth caps than any other player on the planet. As I said, this video was a challenge to research, the data can be pretty sketchy, and I would love to know in the comments if any of you know of someone who might have won more caps at that age level. But Chalabar's tally of 97, I would imagine, is pretty tough to beat. It means that there are actually only nine players who have won more caps for the England senior team than Nathaniel Chalabar won at England's various different youth levels. 
having begun representing England at under-16 level way back in 2008. Chalabar won an incredible 47 caps, 47, for England at under-17 level alone within the space of just two years, captaining England's under-17 team when he was still only 15 years old. If you speak to anyone who has trained or played alongside Chalabar, they'll tell you that he should be playing in the Champions League and for the England senior team. And it speaks volumes about the speed with which he was fast-tracked during his teenage years that his England under-21 debut came as a substitute in which he replaced Jordan Henderson, who is five years older than him. Despite having an excellent academy, Chelsea were not, until recently, renowned for giving their young players many first-team opportunities, and Chalabar only ever made 15 appearances, all of which came in the 2016-17 season, in the Chelsea first team, despite all of his youth team's stardom and handful of impressive loan moves. That means that he does still have a Premier League winner's medal from that season, but in the summer of 2017, he joined Watford for an undisclosed fee, believed to be somewhere in the region of £5 million. The following month, he suffered a horrible injury that ruled him out for the entirety of his debut campaign, and last summer, Chalabar was reunited with former boss Marco Silva at Fulham. Fulham won the championship title this season, at a canter, but injuries limited Chalabar to just eight appearances. Meanwhile, his younger brother Trevor, who has himself won 51 youth caps for England, made 30 appearances for Chelsea this season. At senior level, Chalabar holds the rare but not quite unique distinction of having been capped by England, but officially having played zero minutes, since he was introduced as a substitute during injury time. In reality, he was on the pitch for 6 minutes and 54 seconds as England beat Spain 3-2 away in the UEFA Nations League, which means that, as things currently stand, he has the second shortest England career of all time behind only Martin Kelly, and at this moment in time, it is difficult to see Chalabar breaking back into Gareth Southgate's squad anytime soon, despite his undoubted ability. So those are, again, as far as I can tell, the seven most capped active footballers at youth team level, and how their careers have panned, or I suppose are panning out, at this moment in time. In terms of no longer active players, the seven with the most caps that I could find, from fewest to most caps, are Andrea Perlo, Gabriel Melito, Stavika Kuzmanovsky, Peter Mitarski, Sven Anderson, Aldo Dusha, and Pablo Aymar. Bit of a mixed bag there, yeah. Pablo Aymar went on to win more than 50 caps for Argentina, and won league titles at home, in Spain, and in Portugal. Fellow Argentine Gabriel Melito won 42 caps, and was also a two-time title winner in Spain. Meanwhile, Andrea Perlo did alright in the senior game, all things considered. So that is it for today's video, but thank you all from the bottom of my heart for watching. I sincerely hope that you enjoyed it. Hit the like button if that was the case. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. And make sure you're subscribed, of course, and have notifications turned on for HITC7s. You can also find me uh, on social media, on either Twitter or Instagram, via the username at HITC7s on both, should you wish to do so. And why wouldn't you? You know, it's just more me. Who wouldn't want that? Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, uh, have a brilliant day, if not week. Cheers.